Are you ready to tackle high morning blood sugars and start your day off right? I promise you, we can do this. I tried a lot of strategies to eliminate high morning blood sugars, and in this video, I'll be sharing what works. In this video, I'll give you five simple tips on how to keep your levels steady and kickstart your day without seeing your blood sugar soaring. Let's do this together. You don't want to miss this. Let's go. I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong, and I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997. That's a long time. And over the years, I've been struggling with high or rising morning blood sugars on and off. So it's something that I've done a lot of research on. It's also something where I've done a lot of experimentation on my own body on how to fix this issue. Because there's nothing more annoying than having to start your day fighting a high blood sugar or simply seeing it sneak up without you even eating. I want to start out with tips that do not require any type of medication and then move on to additional tips for us who manage our diabetes with insulin. Are you ready? I found that if you're to outsmart those morning rises, you have to start already the night before. In my experience, having an early dinner and not doing any snacking after around 7 p.m. can make a huge difference on whether or not your blood sugar is gonna soar the next morning. There are a few reasons why this can be a powerful tip. One being that if you do not eat right before bed, there won't be any food in your stomach that need to be digested and then released into your bloodstream overnight. The thing is, we digest food a little slower when we're sleeping, and depending on what you're eating, that can be digested and released into your bloodstream overnight, sneaking up on you in those early hours. Another reason, and I actually think this is really interesting, is that if you stop eating at 6 or 7 p.m. in the evening, and you don't eat breakfast until let's say 6, 7, or 8 a.m., you're actually doing a mini fast. And what I've found is that when I do this, and if I eat low to medium carbs at night, I see less of a blood sugar rise in the morning. To explain this, I think we have to link to why high blood sugars happens in the morning and what happens when we don't eat for prolonged periods of time or relatively prolonged periods of time. One reason for high morning blood sugars can be dawn phenomena, where the body releases hormones that makes you more insulin resistant in those early hours, and that can raise blood sugars. Another reason could be feet on the floor. Feet on the floor is your body trying to be helpful. When you wake up in the morning and you, well, put your feet on the floor, your body will release glucose into your bloodstream to help you have enough energy to get the day started. Well, sometimes I wish my body wasn't quite as helpful. Anyway, back to fasting. So regardless of which mechanism, dawn phenomena or feet on the floor, your body needs to release that glucose from somewhere. And that somewhere is the glycogen stored in your liver and your muscles. But if you do a mini fast overnight, there'll be less glycogen to be stored and less to be released. At least that's how I think about it. Building on that observation, my second tip to reducing high morning blood sugars, and this is yet another way of planning ahead and really depleting those glucose gas tanks, that is to exercise in the evening. Whenever I talk about exercise, I always wanna point out that you don't have to go completely overboard, you don't have to exercise for hours, and you don't have to go to a gym, and you don't have to exercise right before bedtime to see an impact. Some people get really wired up if they exercise before bedtime and then they can't sleep. If that's you, then you probably wanna exercise early in the day. A study published in Diabetologia, hard to say, <laughs> showed that moderate to vigorous exercise in the afternoon or evening could show up to a 25% reduction in insulin resistance. Let's look at some examples of moderate to vigorous activity. So it could be something like a brisk walk, some house cleaning, <laughs> uh, that might be a good thing to do in the evening, um, a bike ride, something like that, or something a little bit more vigorous such as hiking, jogging, shoveling snow, or playing a basketball game. So there's a lot of different options. Now the focus of this video is reducing high blood sugars in the morning, but the reality is if you do not have time to exercise in the evening or in the afternoon, but you have time in the morning, do that. Those AM sessions will still be helpful. I've just found that cardio activity, so for example, brisk walking with the dog before bed, can be really helpful when it comes to reducing high blood sugars in the morning. Okay, so we did everything we could to prepare the evening before. We didn't eat late, so we did a mini fast. We did some sort of activity, exercise, maybe a brisk walk with the dog or the family or yourself on a podcast. And now it's morning, we're ready to start our day. And another really solid strategy for reducing the risk of a blood sugar rise is to eat breakfast. I know, 
That sounds a lot there. If you do not inject insulin to manage your blood sugars, think of breakfast as a morning pancreas kickstart. When you eat breakfast, your pancreas will release insulin into your bloodstream to move your breakfast that's now turned into glucose in your bloodstream out of your bloodstream and into your cells. If you do have to inject insulin, like I do, you inject insulin for your breakfast and now we're back on the same track as those who do not inject insulin. Because insulin, whether self-made or injected, shuts off the liver glucose output. Think about it like turning off a faucet. And that can be a really powerful way of stopping a morning glucose rise in its tracks. I think eating breakfast to prevent a rise in blood sugars is, well, it seemed a little counterintuitive at first, and I was a little bit skeptical. I don't know about you, but I was skeptical. But now, I'm a firm believer. If you manage your blood sugars with insulin, in addition to the strategies we already talked about so far, there are also some really solid insulin dosing strategies that can really help you prevent high blood sugars in the morning. And my fourth tip for preventing high morning blood sugars is to take my insulin right when I wake up. Getting some rapid acting insulin rolling right away has made a huge difference for me. I don't always get to eat my breakfast for an hour, an hour and a half, after I wake up, as I usually attend to my dog first, before I really get started with my day. Plus, I don't know what's going on with my mornings. I clearly do everything in turtle speed, because I hardly get anything done that first hour, an hour and a half. Um, yeah, I'm really not a morning person. Most mornings, I'll wake up, I'll check my blood sugars, and then I'll inject one to one and a half unit of rapid acting insulin. I don't do this every morning though, but most mornings. I rely on my CGM, my continuous glucose monitor, to make that decision. I wake up in the morning, I check my blood sugar, and if I see even the slightest increase in my blood sugars, I'll do an injection. I don't wanna wait until I see a full-blown blood sugar spike because at that point the damage has already happened and it's gonna be more of a headache to get my blood sugars back into range. And remember, rapid acting insulin, once injected, doesn't hit the bloodstream for about 15 minutes and it's not as most effective until 60 to 90 minutes after injected. And once those blood sugars are already high, they can become a little, like a better word, sticky, and they become harder to get down. And my fifth and final tip for preventing high morning blood sugars is another insulin tip, and that is to adjust your basal insulin, so your background insulin. Making really fine adjustments to my background insulin is actually one of the only reasons why I sometimes consider getting an insulin pump, because it's darn difficult to make those fine adjustments with a long acting insulin. But let's still talk through both solutions and I'll also tell you a story of when I realized the real power of adjusting that basal insulin. If you use a long acting insulin, there's only really two ways that you can battle those high morning blood sugars. One strategy is to increase your overall dose and the other one is to play around with the timing of your dose. If you use a really long acting, long-acting insulin such as Traceba or Trigeo, playing around with the insulin timing won't make a whole lot of sense as these are really long duration insulins that'll keep you covered for 24 to 42 hours and they don't really have a spike. However, if you use Lantus or Levermere, although Levermere is being discontinued here in the US, something I'm really sad about, but if you're using either of those two, they will only keep you covered for up to 24 hours. So some people see a benefit of splitting them in two doses, a morning and an evening dose, and playing around with the timing to adjust the spike of those insulin with whenever you might have a morning rise. I found that injecting these shorter acting, long acting insulins very close to bedtime has been really beneficial as they'll be more effective in the early morning hours, helping me battle early morning rises. And of course we have to talk about the issue with the other strategy, which would just increase your dose, as increasing your overall dose can mean low blood sugars at other time of the day. It's just easier with an insulin pump as you can adjust your basal rate to just be a little higher in the morning, or if you use a hyper closed loop pump, it'll take care of it for you. The benefit of setting different basal rates, which you can really only do on an insulin pump, really hit home for me whenever I have to get up much earlier than I usually do, for example, when I'm catching an early flight. When the dawn phenomenon is really kicking my blood sugar bum, I'll usually see it rise around 5 a.m. in the morning. Thing is, when I go for an early flight, for example, I'll often have taken an insulin dose, taken a correction, eaten my breakfast, and be in the airport by 6 a.m., basically catching the rise before it even happens and kind of acting like an insulin pump. And sure, I could get up that early every morning and adjust for those rises, but that's just not me. And I really believe in adjusting our diabetes management to 
our lives and not adjusting our lives to our diabetes. With these five tips, you can take control of your morning blood sugars and reduce the risk of seeing those spikes and you can gain overall better glucose management. But of course, remember, if you're making any changes to your diabetes management, you have to discuss this first with your medical team. Managing our diabetes is not just about our morning blood sugars, of course, and our medical teams will often focus on average numbers such as our A1C. If you want to know how I got my A1C down to 5.7%, check out this video where I share exactly what I did. If you like this video, please give it a like below and leave me a comment. And if you want to see more from me, remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That is that little bell that will be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.